Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, I have the second video in a test prep for grade eight, end of the year, whether you're practicing for a state assessment or an end of the year final in your class. This is part B. Part A and part B do not need to be watched in any specific order because part B is the section of questions that you are allowed to use a calculator. So these questions are from the MCAS 2018 released question of the calculator section. They represent what every grade eight student should know and be able to do by the end of the year of grade eight. They represent common core grade eight standards. So this tells you that it doesn't really matter what state you're from, even though these are Massachusetts questions, they will help you prepare for any state assessment that covers the common core or any final exam covering the common core. They are from the Massachusetts 2018 assessment and you are allowed to use a calculator. So please do use a calculator. They, students in Massachusetts are given a one page reference sheet that they can refer to at any point during the exam. Uh, these are the first top half of this is the conversion factors that we do not expect students to memorize that they're allowed to look them up. We recognize that as you get to be an adult, you will look these up when you need them. And the bottom half of the reference sheet is formulas for area, circle, volume, and the Pythagorean theorem. So students can open this up at any time on any question during the state assessment. And you can also do that today when you're solving your work today because you're actually going to do practice. And I will bookmark this as a chapter in the YouTube video so that you can come back to this and look up anything that you need to know or take a screenshot and have it somewhere else. So here we go. I'm going to show you a series of questions today. I'm going to ask you to pause after I read it, complete your work, and challenge you to try to get the right answer and come back and check your work when you're done. So here we go. The total cost of Gary's cell phone plan includes a one-time cost for a phone plus a monthly fee. This table shows the total cost of Gary's cell phone plan as it accumulates from month one through month five. So here's the table of his phone plan, and they're asking you what is the monthly fee for Gary's cell phone plan. Go ahead and pause now and come back to check your work. Welcome back. So we're going to look at what's happening. So we see that this is increasing by a month for five months, and the cost went from 100 to 120. So I can identify that that was a $20 increase from month one to month two. Month two to month three was an additional $20 plus 20 plus 20. So I can say that for every month, Gary cell phone plan increases by $20. So he definitely has a monthly fee of $20. Here we have triangle XYZ and some of its measurements are shown. They're asking you for triangle MNO that is not shown and telling you that it is similar to triangle XYZ. Asking you what is the measure in degrees of angle N. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So the first thing I want to note is that we have triangle XYZ here. And when compared to triangle MNO that's not shown, angle Y and angle N are corresponding and congruent. So when you name a triangle, X, Y, Z, that's the order that we're going, X, Y, Z, and then when we say that there is a similar figure, then we would start here, M, N, O. So they're asking you about angle N, and because they're similar figures, angle N and angle Y are congruent because similar figures have corresponding angles that are congruent. Now remember that the sum of three interior angles of a triangle have a sum of 180 degrees. And because we know that we have similar figures, we don't need to draw another triangle. We can use this and know that we're trying to identify this angle. Angle Y and angle N are the same. So I'm going to name that angle X, right? The X degrees. Angle Y is X degrees. Angle N is X degrees. And we know that 60 plus X plus 90 have to have a sum of 180 degrees because they are indeed a triangle. Combine 60 plus 90 for 150, subtract 150 from each side, and x is equal to 30. So that we know that the measure of angle N is 30 degrees. Your turn. Trevor drew the design on this coordinate plane, this L-shaped design. 
He then rotated his design 180 degrees clockwise about the origin. Which of the following is the image of Trevor's design after he rotated it? Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're done. Welcome back. So I'm going to first show you that point out it's 180 degrees clockwise. Clockwise goes just like a clock about the origin. So I'm going to move this over here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do one turn to the right. So turned it 90 degrees to the right and another turn. You could physically pick up your computer and turn it upside down. So one turn, two turns. Remember, each turn is 90 degrees. Or you could just turn your head however you visualize it. My students like to take their screen and turn it. I'm not that tech savvy, so I've just done it for you. And I can tell that this new image matches choice A. Amy and Simon each bought a pair of shorts and some t-shirts. Each pair of shorts cost the same amount and each t-shirt cost the same amount. Amy paid $60 for one pair of shorts and two t-shirts. Simon paid $75 for one pair of shorts and three t-shirts. What was the cost in dollars of one pair of shorts? You can ignore this test strategy and just go ahead and solve and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So this is a system of linear equations. I'm going to, we'll have two unknowns. I'm going to say that the variable S is equal to the cost of one pair of shorts and the variable T is the cost of one t-shirt. I'm going to use those so that when I'm done, my, if I, you can use X and Y, but I like to use S and T so that I know that S is my shirts and T's are, S are my shorts and T are my t-shirts, sorry. So I go to Amy and this equation represents Amy. She bought one pair of shorts plus two t-shirts and spent a total of $60. And I put the one here, you don't need to. One pair of shorts for Simon and three t-shirts cost him $75. So now I am going to subtract because that will eliminate, we're gonna solve by elimination. I'm going to eliminate the S variable term so that I can solve for T. So if I'm gonna subtract, I have to subtract every term of the second equation from the first. So I have a zero pair here, 1s minus 1s is zero, 2t minus 3t is negative t, and 60 minus 75 is negative 15. Divide each side by negative one or multiply by negative one, and t is equal to 15. So I know that the cost of one t-shirt is $15, but they've asked me to find one pair of shorts. So I'm going to go back up to the first equation and replace t with 15 to solve for the value of s. S plus two times the 15 equals 60. Two times 15 is 30. Subtract 30 from both sides, and I get that one pair of shorts is $30. Now we have a rectangle, and one of its diagonals is shown in the diagram. Based on the dimensions in the diagram, what is the value of X? Your turn. Pause. Come back when you're done. Welcome back. So I hope you recognize that because they've told us that this is a rectangle, this is a right angle, and we have a right triangle in here, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the value of x. x is our hypotenuse. So our legs form the right angle, 15 and 20. So 15 squared plus 20 squared equals c squared. 15 squared is 225, 20 squared is 400. Add, and we get 625. Now we're going to find the square root of each side. And the square root of 625 is 25, and the square root of c squared is c. So I know that the value of x is 25. Now we have triangle JKL shown in this coordinate plane. Triangle JKL will be translated two units up and five units to the right. What will be the coordinates of the image of point K after the translation? Pause now. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So we're going two units up from K. So here's K, two units up and five units to the right. And so K will end up right here, which is the ordered pair 2, 1, choice C. 
Now we have an open response question, and this is one that students are expected to show or explain their work. It is graded by an actual human, not a computer. So students are graded on a scale from zero to four, depending on how well they answered and got correct answers and showed or explained. So if they don't show or explain, they lose points. So here we go. Colton is heating a pot of water. He records the temperature of the water in the pot every minute. This equation models Colton's data, where X represents the number of minutes of the water being heated and Y represents the temperature of the water in Fahrenheit. Part A, what does the coefficient 7.5 in the equation represent in the context of this situation? Go ahead and write down your thoughts. Come back and hit play when you're done. Pause now. Welcome back. I hope you got the coefficient 7.5 represents the slope, which is the ratio of y to x. So it's the ratio of temperature to minutes. So how we could explain this is the temperature of the water increases seven and a half degrees Fahrenheit every minute. So think of slope as your unit rate. Part B, what does the value 40 in the equation represent in the context of this situation? Please pause and write down your thoughts. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. The value 40 represents the temperature of the water before Colton started to heat the pot of water. So the initial temperature of the water before he turned on the heat. Part C, what is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit of Colton's pot of water after 16 minutes? Don't forget to show or explain. Pause now, come back when you're done. Welcome back. So remember that when we are looking at this, it told us that X represents the number of minutes. So we have 16 minutes here. I'm going to replace X with the number 16. S multiply 7.5 by 16, you get 120. Add, and you get 160. So after 16 minutes, the temperature of the pot of water will be 160 degrees. Part D. Water boils at a temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. After 16 minutes of heating, how much additional time to the nearest minute will be needed for the water to boil? Don't forget to show or explain your work. Pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So Y is our temperature after X minutes. So I'm going to replace Y with 212 and see how many minutes it takes to heat the water to boiling. So 212 is my y, and I need to solve for x. I'm going to subtract 40 from each side. 212 subtract 40 is 172. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by 7.5 and get that x has a value of 22.93. It's said to the nearest minute, so I'm gonna round this to 23 and it takes 23 minutes to boil water to a temperature of 212 degrees. So I know that I've already been boiling it for 16 minutes. So I'm gonna subtract 16, and after 16 minutes, I will have seven minutes remaining to get the water to boil to a temperature of 212 degrees. Next question. Aaron drew a map showing the location of two cities, Odin, and Lundy on a grid. The map and its scale are shown. Aaron drew a straight line from Odin to Lundy, which is the closest to the distance Odin and Lundy along the straight line. So you're gonna find the distance between Odin and Lundy. Please show your work and come back when you're done. Pause now. Welcome back. So I hope you recognize that you were in a coordinate plane and you could turn this into a right triangle. And then when you do that, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this because it's the hypotenuse. So we count and this is six units and then this is eight units. So our Pythagorean theorem, the legs are six and eight. Six squared is 36, eight squared is 64. Add, we get 100 square root of both sides, and c is equal to 10. So I can say that this diagonal distance in the coordinate plane is 10 miles. 
Next question. Laura drew a triangle with the dimensions shown. Which of the following triangles is congruent to Laura's triangle? Please pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So congruent figures have corresponding angles and corresponding sides that have the same measures. So we're looking for a triangle that has three side lengths of five, five, and eight. So when we look through here, our choice is B. B has the same corresponding sides, eight to eight and five and five. Which of the following is not a function? Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So let's review what a function is. A function maps each input to one unique output. And again, we're looking for which one is not a function. So I look at A, one, 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 one. So this is a function. B, zero to one, one to one, two has one output, three has one output. So B is a function. C, Maps to one, maps to one, maps to one, maps to one. So that leaves D and our input three maps to zero and three. So since the input three has two different outputs, it is not a function. There you have it. That is our test review with the portion of the test that allows a calculator for grade eight state assessment. I hope this helped you review some of these Common Core Grade 8 standards. And please consider subscribing to my channel, The Magic of Math, and signing up to receive notifications when I post new videos. Please give me a thumbs up, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.